Songs are prayers, mantras for becoming, anthemic heirlooms and portals to our deepest truth. Songs are my favorite way to connect with people and their stories. My name is Hope Litwin, and this is Three Songs Podcast, a place to excavate your story through the songs that raised you. I met Laraji at the Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California this winter. He is a powerhouse of light and laughter, a deep yogi and a pioneer of ambient music. I had the honor of improvising with him, attending his concerts and having some beautiful meals with him and R.G. Oshiananda, his music partner, during their week-long stay at Esalen that I will not forget. I hope you enjoy this episode of Three Songs Podcast with the one and only Laraji. so impressive because that might have been the first young teenage male singing group that I was exposed to. It sort Ooh. of opened up the portal, as you said. Mm-hmm. And, you know, hearing our energy on the, on the radio like that. And I went out and bought the record. And there was a teenage gang, the teenagers that uh, showed us a new possibility. We wanted to do that. Let's form a group. Let's all get the same shirt or the same sweater or the same <laughs> necktie and look like an organized group and create a song. What is that about organized energy? Uh, let me hold over from your homies, your clan, your family, your intimate tribe of intimates. Mm-hmm that you can laugh and sing and fart with. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's like collective energy. And that's what, mm-hmm. when I've seen the last few concerts you've done here, it's like you're orchestrating a space for a collective energy to fuse. Yes. And it's very cool. Yes, I relate to what you're saying from over here on this side of the same oneness. I see that I'm using sound to point to the invisible Mm -hmm. and uh, the invisible field, which is here. It's only invisible because it doesn't play out so graphically in the linear third dimension because 
it's everywhere at the same time as I perceive it. And so finding ways of pointing to it. Uh, and if I'm pointing and someone else's imagination goes to that place, they would be in the unity field and this fly <laughs> is in, is the, in unity the unity field, field with me. <laughs> so that is a bringing people together. I think there's the unity is not about coming together. It's about realizing we were never separate. Yeah. yeah. This fly <laughs> is not separate. <laughs> He's here to remind you. <laughs> Maybe he wants a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> you ever see a fly come away from a peanut butter and jelly sandwich meal? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. I, so did you always... So when I was like initially trained in music, we're very much trained into linear time. And to come out of that, it is a remembering, I think. But it's also a deep practice of being able to hold a different kind of space. And yeah. I'm wondering how you, if you experience it as channeling. Someone told me earlier today that music is always happening. It's just whether you tap into it or not. I like that. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Yes. So that's been on my mind today. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's, there's a saying that... Uh, Hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. Healed people, healed people. Uh, empowering people, empower people. Empowered people, empower people. Mm -hmm. I feel that initiated people initiate others. Mm -hmm. If you've been initiated in whatever way, whether you were bulk dumped into an expanded state of consciousness for five minutes and your cells and your whole energy signed on to a newer sense of present time then let's say as a performing artist if you're responding to that in your music in your art in your dance in your writings mm -hmm. there's something pointing to this initiation space and uh, so i feel that's what i do now, I'm channeling it was a good word. I used to think, oh, I'm a channel. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm channeling. And <laughs> then after some meditative episodes and getting it from teachers too, that the body is inside of us, that the universe, the stars and the moon is within us. No. So if this, if we are this absolute space, then channeling would have to be channeling something that's already within us, bringing a focus to it so that it can inhabit our awareness space and our performance agenda at that moment. So channeling, I'm, I'm going to channel Arcturus, intelligence from Arcturus, and it sound like uh, you'd sit down and go, <laughs> And somebody on our Taurus said, hey, somebody's channeling us. So go down. <laughs> Let's go down and make them look good. <laughs> but it mystified me. That kind of channeling mystified me. I didn't have enough to say it isn't so. But after a while of getting a sense that the self is infinite and all of everything is within, then the channeling, it changed my attitude. If I'm channeling, I'm channeling something from within, not from outside of the real me, may, maybe outside of the limited sense of me, going to another aspect of myself. Perhaps that's what actors do, is I'm going to channel this character. Mm -hmm. It's breath, it's, it's emotional state. So I'm bringing it through so that it uh, uses this facility as its content holder in this dimension. And uh, it's a very intimate affair. Mm -hmm. So this is energy. If I'm channeling energy, if I, I'm going to use the word channeling, then I'm having an intimate affair with this character or this energy. And 
my boundaries are dissolved, my human, personal human history uh, boundaries are being dissolved right there, and I'm experiencing an alternative situation, whether it's alternative time, space, or alternative intelligence. Mm -hmm. If you're doing shrooms or something that's non-human and non-human intelligence comes through, mm -hmm. I'd say I'm channeling non-human intelligence. Maybe non-human intelligence is channeling me. So there's for the channeling. I like using it when I understand why I'm using it. And other times when somebody says, I'm, I'm going to channel Arch, Archangel Michael mm -hmm. and sits down and I need a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Archangel Michael, I got you covered. So, uh, <laughs> then I would listen, though. There was intelligence in those kind of, I would hear, and it helped me to focus that the human body container um, that there's some uh, other level of intelligence that's operating beyond what I, and it helped me to stay open to, to uh, either higher intelligence or alternative space time and kept me uh, uh, just to get open to that. Then there are the word transmission. Mm -hmm. Do I transmit? I feel transmission is that I don't transmit and I can be still like in Shavasana or meditation and let a transmission take place. The frequency that's ready to come through the me that I'm prepared to allow. So if I prepared some, some yoga, Shavasana, and I'm in a state of least resistance, then let's say that a natural transmission of eternal sound current may become part of my auditory experience or the sense of borderlessness and eternal present time. And I say the transmission, and if I happen to be performing an instrument at that time, I could say that the uh, a higher feel or the fifth dimension is in transmission through me. Am I transmitting? I think more I'm surrendering to it, and I might be indicating the frequency at which a transmission can come. Like tuning the dial? Yes, Yeah. exactly, yeah. the dial. So there's channeling, transmitting, and then there's, you can say, I'm creating this, or I'm composing this music, or I'm performing this music. Roberta Flack, I don't know if you've ever mm. heard of her. Yes, she once used a term very casually, and I thought, Hey, that's pretty hip. She says she doesn't play an instrument. She operates it. Oh, yeah. So you're operating, knowing what to do to allow maybe the transmission to come through. Fantastic. For the music to happen. That's like a, a way to have language around flow state. Yes. Yeah. Because if you, if the right levers are in place, then the energy will flow in the right way. Like the motor will run. Mm, and it, exactly. Yeah. And I feel that could offer empowerment to many people who never thought of being musicians. You know, yeah. I don't have to be a musician if I learn how to operate. You know, uh, how to, I'm looking at forming a zither choir. And instead of teaching people how to play the instrument, how to operate it. Yeah. So that you can witness music happening if you perform the right operation. Yeah. There's something I'm thinking of too. It's a little bit different, but I heard a talk by Thich Nhat Hanh where he was saying that everything exists. It just takes one or two conditions in order for that thing to manifest. And he was holding a box of matches and he held up a match and he said, this already contains a flame. It just takes one or two conditions in order for the flame to manifest. And then he gave one condition, which was striking the match on the box. Mm -hmm. And then the flame emerged. And he said, this, this match was not flameless before. It contained a flame. It just needed one condition in order for that to manifest. I think about that a lot. <laughs> and it's a, a different way of maybe saying a similar thing. I guess, what were we talking about? <laughs> I think it's like the, you were talking about 
everything existing within instead of yes. channeling as in yes I'm instead of channeling it's all within the yeah. flame is within mm -hmm. the match mm -hmm. yeah the potential is there and it's not always visible yes. but you need one one condition one lever pulled or one mm -hmm. machine knob dialed and then that emerges out of what seemed to be dormant before or yeah. yes mm -hmm. and in that some you let go of something yeah. Let go of one understanding of what your present time is. Yeah. In order for another version to inhabit. And yeah. I will say that the, the purpose of staying empty vessels so that you uh, can receive. So those, those changes. If you want to be in Alcapulco right now, you have to let go of the idea that you're in Big Sur. Yep. That could go very deep. Mm -hmm. Do you want to play another song? Uh, that means going over there. No, no, right here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> 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 yes. Another song was uh, uh, Fairy Tales Can Come True, Young at Heart by, it was by Frank, Frank, Sinatra? And si Frankie, Frank Sinatra. Yeah. See, Frankie Lyman, Frank Sinatra. Hey, there's a Frank. Yeah. To be frank with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ready for this. All right. This and a veggie dog make my day. <laughs> no peanut butter jelly sandwich? Where do you go? Google or YouTube to get that? I, ju I just YouTube. YouTube, you just bring up the name. Mm -hmm. Fairy tales can come true It can happen to you If you're young at heart For it's hard you will find To be narrow of mind If you're young at heart You can go to extremes with impossible schemes You can laugh when your dreams Fall apart at the seams And life gets more exciting With each passing day And love is either in your heart Or on its way Don't you know that it's worth Every treasure on earth To be young at heart For as rich as you are, it's much better by far to be young at heart. And if you should survive to a hundred and five, look at all you'll derive out of being alive. And here is the best part, you have a head start. If you are among the very young at heart And if you should survive to a hundred and five Look at all you'll derive out of being alive And here is the best part You have a head start If you are among the very young at heart buddied up with that song it seemed to be my song bible that is your song <laughs> yeah. you've heard it before i have a vague memory of it uh -huh. but i've for some reason this is not in the frank sinatra canon that i've really like grown up with yeah so 
beautiful. Yes. And being in your laughing class, mm -hmm. you've fulfilled this uh, this prophecy. <laughs> There's a couple of things in there. One, the line, and it. You can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams. Perhaps we're somewhere quietly getting it that our dreams are falling apart. <laughs> and we're just walking down the street or sitting in a car or sitting on a bus, just containing it by ourselves. And maybe we'll just get something that'll cause us to smile in the next five minutes and we're ready to move on to the next chapter of our life. To be able to laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams, you know. Pivot queens. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that your your music contains this. I, I don't hear a lot this like joyful bubbliness and ambient music. It's such a beautiful combination. Mm -hmm. It's like when you have a dish that has the perfect amount of like salt and sweet and sour. Yeah. You know, it's this full meal yes it's really beautiful and i think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of music now that is expressing very dark or kind of hopeless despair which mm -hmm. i think yeah why not express if that's what's coming through get it out but i'm i'm missing a lot this um like the full spectrum of taste you know yes like a full meal that goes through every part of the palate which i feel like you do a great job of in your sets it's like every part of the palate is hit so that by the time you're done with the concert or the experience it's like a full satiation thank yeah. you yeah <laughs> and uh it's something that i didn't realize i was missing until i was i came to a few of your concerts while you were here i was like what is this that's happening that I am not experiencing so much in these other concerts or experiences? And I think that's it. So I appreciate so much your ability to fuse joy in, mm. and uh, sometimes absurdity and sometimes bubbly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's called sonic audacity. Sonic audacity. <laughs> that's fantastic. Is there someone that encourages that for you? Or you just tap into that for your mantra of young at heart? Um, young at heart played a large role in committing to keeping the youthful spirit alive. Dancing a lot, mm -hmm. laughing a lot, uh, gravitating toward friends or social communities that have a, a very upward sparkly Mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm. an upward sparkly agenda that's how you advertise yes <laughs> we have a sparkly up <laughs> yes. upward sparkly agenda come join us yeah anyway. so for you joy is a daily dedication say that again please. would you say joy is a daily dedication or to be See, i wouldn't say it like that i'd say bliss is the fundamental around which, from which, within which, and as which I uh, operate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can momentarily lose tight focus on bliss. Yes, I was thinking about this. She was reminding me of the uh, young at heart. Mm -hmm. But I did sing that song for a talent show in my high school years. Really? Yes. And my... Mother and brother were there in the audience. The audience was full. I was part of a whole cast called Cavalcade of Stars. Ooh. So I sang a young at heart. Mm -hmm. After the performance, when we were going home, my brother leaned over to me and says, you know, mother was crying when you were singing that song. Oh. And uh, I thought, how sweet. And just recently, my dear Mother Mary made her transition. Mm -hmm. Her birth date is on uh, June the 2nd, and she made her transition a few days before so that her actual burial took place on her birth date. Mm -hmm. 
and her birth date was 105. Really? Yes. Wow. So if you should survive to 105. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. What were her secrets? Well, she didn't drink, didn't smoke. She praised the Lord, church going. Uh, she loved everybody. She helped everybody. She was a registered nurse at one time. She forgave people. Mm. She's easy to laugh with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she watched her diet. And she listened to the doctor's orders. Mm -hmm. So that was it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's listen to one last song. Hmm? Another listen, song? Yeah, let's listen to one last uh, song. Another big one was a, The Beatles. Knocked me out with that. I want to hold your hand. Yes, excellent. That was very mystical because I woke up in the morning. You know, it's school years. You know, I don't know if I was in high school or grade school, but to wake up to a radio in the morning with that song blasting in my ear, I said, "What is this?" And you know, I want to hold your hand. It was something about. I didn't even know how to put it in words. There was something about their voice or the energy with which they were singing, mm -hmm. but it was affecting me in an unusually radiant, uplifting, bubbly way. Mm. Yes, excellent. Okay, loading now. The Beatles. <laughs> I get a lot of responses and emails. <laughs> Good. That's so that song, The Beatles, it could have been that they rehearsed it a lot and got real juice into it. There's a, there's a real juice in there. Uh, or maybe they, were, uh, they weren't alone in the recording studio. At the time, cannabis was probably something. <laughs> there was something in there that I could put my finger on. Mm -hmm. But it was like joy, exuberance. The Beatles. Synergy. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed so much your classes, your laugh class, and your concerts, and just eating dinner with you and jamming with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a necessary pleasure. Yes. Excellent. Thank you for being you. In the glow. Yes, yeah. I appreciate your mirroring myself. Thank you. Oh, very good. Thank you, Rashi. Sorry to keep you over. Okay, excellent. Any final thoughts? Pardon? Any final, final thoughts? Final prayer? Mm, you want to laugh, laugh nah, it out? I, I would say that uh, <laughs> one of the major ingredients in, if you could say, my life or success is learning how to listen to, understand, target, and follow the inner guidance. Learning how to notice it and to follow it, to trust it. It, yeah, it played a, a large role in my choosing to explore the electric auto harp. That yeah. voice came up while I was in a pawn shop one day and just. Don't pawn your guitar for money. Swap it for that auto harp in the window. It was a, that was an inner voice? An inner voice. Very clear and distinct, loving. And I said, whoa. You know, I want to see where this would go. And those are like portals. Yeah. You know, you could say, I don't want to do that. I need the money and I'll check this idea out later on in life. Yeah. 
and then the window might close and then you might not get another portal for one. So when the portal opens, you can bargain with you. Well, oh, I don't feel like trying this now. Come back in an hour. From <laughs> yeah. The portal doesn't, it doesn't seem to work that way. Yeah, that's you know, true. Being prepared to move through the portal, I think that's what yoga does. How to relax, how to trust the uh, more subtle, intelligent uh, in intervention in your life. I'll play little games with, with that to like pr practice portal following. Yes. Where with small things that don't have such a, um, such a heaviness to them. So if my intuition says like, pick up these three small flowers, I'll be like, why? Just, just pick them up. Yeah. And so I'll just pick them up. And then later on in the day, I'll meet three people who just seem to want flowers. And then I'll hand them to them and be like, I wanted a flower. Thank you for bringing me a flower. Absolutely. So it's just fun to follow these. Like It's like tiny little training, like little training wheels. Of, yes. Uh, and you. that aspect, what did you say? Why? Yeah, I never that, know why. That comes up <laughs> too. It says, get off the train here and we're on the platform for the next train. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> and then I'll push myself off and I'll say to myself, see, I'm watching myself. I'm, I'm uh, uh, trying to, you know, trying to get out of my basic practice is trusting that voice. That's the radar. Mm -hmm. And so I'll stand on the platform and there's Raji. Yeah. I'm in town. Hey, you busy tonight? I need a, I need a, I need you to play on my gig. Things, things like that would happen. Yeah. And uh, you don't see it coming. Mm -hmm. so learning how to listen to the voice because it'll come at a time when it might be inconvenient often <laughs> often and that's the big deal and when you get online with the voice it's like the ethers of the universe shift mm -hmm. because you're on a different agenda and you feel like you're resonating with an infinite intelligence mm -hmm. and that's that's a glorious sense of vic victory that you're in present time aligned with uh, uh, higher intelligence yeah. Present time practice. Absolutely. And I like to tell people who ask, well, how do you listen to your inner voice? And you can experiment in safe spaces like parks. Go to mm -hmm. the opening of a park if you've got a three or four hours. This is, which way should I go into the park? And then listen to what you think you hear. And follow it. And then if you get to a place where you think you're stuck, what should I do now? And you just listen to what you think you're hearing. And then go, go sit by the pool. I don't feel like going by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> just watch your resistance too. Yeah. The resistance is cute because the resistance is, <laughs> I think my idea is better than yeah. yours. Yeah. Then you go sit by the pool and you start seeing things. And it all makes sense. And you start trusting. So I say experiment with a park and find out what happens if you dare to follow the edge of your imagination. You see, learn how to trust that good things can happen, meaningful things, safe things can happen. I love that. Follow the edge of your intuition. Yeah. It's like the rubber band. You stretch it a little bit further, then a little bit to the fringe, a little bit further yeah. where it feels comfortable, and then you probably spring back a little bit, but then you can extend it more next time. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. You're so welcome, Hope Litwin. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Three Songs. If you enjoyed this conversation, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel and remember to turn the notification bell on so that you can be updated when new episodes are published. This is an interactive project aimed at building a meaningful musical community online. So I would love to hear your thoughts and musings or even a song recommendation in the comments below. If you'd like to connect, you can find me on all platforms at Hope Litwin or at hopelitwin.com. My music is available on Spotify, iTunes, and Bandcamp under my name, Hope Litwin. Peace out.